It is May the 9th, 2021, and you're watching The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Hey, hello and welcome. I'm Chris, this is Imar, this is Adrian, and this is over there, Jeremiah. How are you doing? <laughs> hello, hello. I finally know where you guys are in relation to That's good. You pointed without any I can mistakes. Never That's move there those go. bubbles around. I never <laughs> move those bubbles anywhere else. <sighs> I'm, I'm getting more comfortable in my corner here. I, I, <laughs> wait, wait till I change it into little heart shapes or stars oh, or clouds yeah. or something. How about that? <sighs> <sighs> the future of photography, episode one hundred and. 80. Um, my apologies. I I just realized today when we we're recording this that that at 179. I I hadn't pressed the release button yet, so this was a bit uh, late now. Uh, but anyway, it'll work all out. So 179. We talked about uh, light and the story of light. And um, thanks again, Adrian, for putting that one together. Um, and then at the end of that, we decided that. Light is kind of an interesting topic to stick with. So we decided to talk about light again. So Yeah, um, it's odd how that works in photography, right? <laughs> As light, who needs light? Um, interestingly enough, light, uh, what, what's your weather right now? We have, we've had the, the, the most sunshine in uh, probably a month here in Germany today. Really hard, harsh light, uh, very warm in terms of temperature, not in terms of the color of the light. But um, yeah, the sun is out in full blast. How about well, you, Jeremiah? Cal here in California, um, this is the time of year where the sea begins to uh, change its temperature, right? Starts to As to in thermometer up. temperature. Because we, we, we have to distinguish there. Mm -hmm. That's true. And and mm -hmm. you have all kinds of inversions. So May, uh, commonly in Southern California, especially in the morning, is referred to as May Gray. And in June, June Gloom. Mm -hmm. Usually burns off by midday or something like that. Okay. So the mornings are rather soft and, and Irish light, mm -hmm. uh, which I love. It's very, very soft mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, beautifully uh, enveloping. As opposed to later on in the day where we get that hard California light and then because of pollution and all the rest of it, we have the golden magic hour. That's spectacular. So mm. we go through a lot of changes here. But all California right. light is very beautiful. How about on the on the, the our island dwellers? How about you guys? <laughs> well, you can see behind me that it's changing <laughs> by the second. Um, this is where, something I love about yeah. island. <laughs> This time of year, it's kind of four seasons in one day. You could have hailstones in the morning and like yeah. you know, the sun splitting the rocks, but just for five minutes and <laughs> it'll be gone again. I've so as you've warned me already, watch my lights. Yeah, this is, this is a very, very quickly just moving like, target for you. I remember yeah. I was in uh, on the west coast up in Donegal and we were shooting some oh. stuff on the sea and it was like the, the, it was beautiful beautiful Atlantic coast you just and, watch the light and that move. gale came oh, in I mean yeah. really a, a, a quick gale it was very wet we put things over the cameras on the tripods and I asked mm -hmm. my Irish friend how long is it going to take and he, he looked out and said yeah about two minutes <laughs> and then two minutes later sun <laughs> came out again you can see <laughs> the end of it uh, yeah, yeah. Adrian how about you yeah. Uh, well, we have had the frostiest April for 60 years here in the UK uh, and now we're into May and basically the early May weather is what early April should be. So it's quite changeable. Uh, we had winds of 45 miles an hour in the last week. So, you know, and how's the light? Summers. The light, I don't know, it's too windy to see. <laughs> the light is very changeable because the clouds are just scudding across the sky, you know. And yeah. uh, so right right now, it's uh, today it's been quite bright, actually, today. Uh, but it is mm. um, it is very changeable still here. Yeah, we're not really settled into the proper springtime yet. So there is... Go ahead, Jeremiah. There is there there is something spectacularly uh, magical when we begin talking about natural light or daylight in the kind of uh, atmospheric shifts that really uh, change the quality of light that we are able to see. And, and being aware of it and anticipating it uh, is something that photographers, certainly of landscapes, uh, should be well aware of mm -hmm. when they kind of venture out mm -hmm. because 
it's it's as exciting as uh, being able to manipulate your your speeds and f stops, so, and not patience. Mm-hmm. So 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 the initial thought was we would be making this an episode about uh, three types of light, talking about available light, <laughs> talking about continuous artificial light, as in here LED things and that kind of stuff, mm. and uh, and then flash, as in studio photography, short bursts of light. Um, and when we when we discussed before recording, it kind of turns out that none of us are really into flash photography <laughs> that much. So I guess it's probably going to be mostly about available light. Let, let's get the other two out of the way uh, first, because I think flash really the most mysterious to most people. Imar, for you, you, you wrote yeah. something in our notes, so um, I let you have the word. Yeah, for a yeah. I, well, I. It's a bit of a mystery to me because I've never quite figured out how to work it properly. And like I kind of I hankered after having a, a flash for ages and ages. And then I bought one and it was so expensive that I was almost afraid to use it <laughs> because I was afraid something would happen to it. So it was kind of a pointless buy in the end. Yeah, something did happen um, to it. You put it in a box. You put it I away. put it in a box and there it is. And it's minded and it's perfect and pristine, but I never use it. Can I ask uh, if if. When you guys, all of you, have used Flash, have you ever tried to use Flash at its most minimum settings, yeah. like the the smallest amount of of burst? Um, because uh, often we use Flash to light a a, mm. a subject rather than to supplement or contrast yeah. the light that's around. And that's always a interesting exploration. I mean, we we could talk about it in theory now because none of us are really particularly <laughs> fond of our flash work or else we would have posted it on our um, TFOP. Um, well, uh, I, I have to say sure I am thing. fond of it. I, I just, just to, just to balance it out a little bit, I am fond of it. I just haven't done it. It just occurred to me I haven't done it in a while. I think the last... The last time I got out all of that kit was probably late in 2019. And I guess part of that will be, you know, the whole world went strange. Um, but the, you know, uh, and at that point I, I had uh, I had a birthday party and I had to take some shots of, of kids at a birthday party. And so I had the whole rig out at that point because it was fancy dress. And I had, I think, four speed lights and a backdrop mm-hmm. and, and stuff and soft boxes and stuff like that. So, so that was all fun, and I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, but it is for, for me that's kind of a a production thing. Right? It's when I've got something to where, where, when I'm on on the hook for doing something. You know, it's not something I, I I naturally move towards. I used to. I guess it's just a trend for me. It's just like you know, I spent years playing around with stuff, especially with film cameras as well. Learning how to use flash with film, where you can't pre visualize in, in quite the same way. And uh, or or maybe it's fair to say you have to pre visualize, it. <laughs> um, but it is it's not something I've done recently, which is an interesting interesting thought. Very much more about video and continuous light these days. I mean, consumer flashes now are so rigged to their brand of cameras that they it, it's much more I think uh, challenging to adjust the flash exposure. Um, <laughs> And control it the way w- I I used to do when I when I did a commercial shooting or fashion, uh, where in our flashes were we were able to really control them, uh, even the speed of the flash when they would trigger before after. That's right. That's the really hour. interesting that that's mm. your picture because it's not my picture of of the consumer world. Um, I my, I when I shoot with flash it is speed lights they are not the same brand as my camera they're they're completely independent and i find them very easy to control because i have a little hot shoe you know uh transmitter um and the you know the the speed lights have receivers built into them and and i can group them or treat them singly and i can put them up and i can put them down and all sorts of oh yeah well you're talking about a more professional rig i'm really just (laughs) talking about you know the kind that slide into your hot shoe and Oof, mm-hmm. right oh yeah in your face yeah, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. those uh, certainly the the ballast uh, versions of flash which are being displaced by LEDs in many many ways uh, or combined so that you have a continuous light to adjust your shape and then poof for the speed of it 
Uh, also, it's very different if you're using, say, a Hasselblad uh, in terms of, or, or a, a uh, DSLR, just technically. Um, but but the, those flashes that are ballast controlled, whatever you want to call it, they're pretty great. I mean, you can really dial those in. You also but need most, a bunch most, of assistance to hold them around. I was about you, to right? say that. The, 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 <laughs> benef the benefit of that is they come with assistance, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> at least to, two. Is that why you know the Pro I mean? Photo Kit costs so much? Does it come with an assistance? Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, no those, are, those are additional. For me, Flash is, is a kind of a, a two-headed beast because I, um, I teach photography and that includes Flash. So I, I'm well versed in using them. I also understand how they work. I also understand uh, what the major hangups are that people have. And I think the biggest one is that it, 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 you have to pre-visualize. There is no preview unless you have a, a, a big studio flash with a, with a, a modeling light. But, yeah. but other than that, if, if you work with on-camera flash, then usually you got to it, it's, it's more trial and error to get to the right result if you're not really experienced with it. And, uh, and but there are still areas where the flash is kind of important. I mean, if you if you do portraiture, and you Macro? shoot well, not even there, but uh, with with portraiture, if you shoot people uh, pictures of people, and uh, you 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 crank up those LEDs, they'll be blinded, they'll be squinting. Yeah. So a flash <laughs> like is me. so it's yeah a, a flash is so <laughs> short that uh, most people uh, the squinting comes after the flash fire. Beats so. the blink. Beats the blink. Yes, yeah. beats the um, blink. That's the word. So flash, yeah, it's a it's a strange beast, and of course it is the only light that we have right now that can put like a megawatt of uh, energy out in uh, thousands of seconds. Because that's, a, that's the that, levels we're talking yeah. about here. It's really a lot of energy it's, in a very short time. Uh, no continuous it is, light source it, does that. And to, to use that in combination with continuous light exterior, for example, oh, yeah. something that, that I used to do is, is really dial down, you know, shooting, say, Kodachrome, uh, really crunch down in terms of the f-stop and, and uh, the speed would have to be synced to the flash. But so that the oversaturation of the background was quite quite dark or quite moody, right? And the flash was constructed to give a quote proper exposure, mm. so that you had this kind of normally lit, shall we say, or interesting lit, right? Uh, human in a very dark moody uh, environment. Now, of course, we could do that with uh, Photoshop. Oh, and, and things <laughs> things also. Oh, it's a lot easier to do it with light, though. <laughs> Well, if you have assistance, I'd sure. rather work with lights than than with Photoshop any day of the week. And it depends and how many assistants you have. That's very true. That's very true. So, so the flesh does it does have its place. It does have its its um, its um, raison d'être. But it also does become a bit less important as we as our cameras get more and more sensitive. So you can now have a, a huge dynamic range and cameras that go to ISO, I don't know how many tens of thousands. And there's, there's a Pentax that's just been released. It's a DSLR, actually. I think it goes up to 2 million ISO. Usable <laughs> ISO. I'm talking two, usable two ISO million. because <laughs> 2 million, you don't want to use those. Well, um, I think I think from, from what I've read that, okay, 2 million might be a bit of a stretch, right? But it's usable up to something like 250,000, right? <laughs> it's, it's usable up to within about three stops of that. So so, you know, it's, it's still pretty impressive. <laughs> and then the AI gets rid of all the noise. And yeah, it it's, it's, yeah. So oh, all yeah. The, all I mean, the there, skill, there's lots no of... skill required whatsoever. Wow. No, no. I, yeah. I disagree with that, actually, because, well, I suppose... <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Okay. All right. I'll be quiet then. <laughs> um, well, you need skill in order to earn enough money to buy that camera. That's for sure. That's I'm sure it's point. pricey. <laughs> so, continuous light, uh, continuous artificial light. I think that's that's the one. And I, whenever I do a workshop, hopefully soon again, um, where we deal with light and we look at these three kinds of light: the uh, available and the continuous uh, artificial and the flash. The, I usually kick it off with available and then go to continuous artificial because it helps you 
understand how the direction of light and the intensity of the light and so on works and with with handheld devices like these you can you can really hold it in one hand while holding the camera in the other hand and just play with these kind of things and it's a very playful approach um, to learn how light influences your photography so that's what i love about it also the quality of the light has become quite a bit better over the last i'd say 10 years um I yeah because we can adjust the 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 waves they could get very specific in terms of yeah. energy and color i and, started and off the with with the common continuous lights i started off with these um fluorescents these uh Little ones? Like like three fluorescent bulbs yeah, yeah. in an aluminum reflector. And mm. the colors that came out of those were so bad. Because I didn't <laughs> buy expensive ones. I couldn't afford them. Yeah. So it was like, it, it was really hard. You couldn't correct for the greenish tinge and everything. It was like, well, sometimes we use that on purpose in oh, film. Mm. If right? you need it, yes, then and it, for sure. And it looked, no, but it looks really... Green. Fabulous. Green. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, I, I'm big on cyan, so I. I if it serves the story, then yes, of course, of course. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, a a a story about perfect skin color is is really you know glowing or natural or you know that that's really uh, not going to work with so, green lit. The one among us who's struggling with uh, the continuous lights is Emar, because uh, you you have this constant yeah, fight with the lights that are in your face right now, right? <laughs> I know, yeah. I'm I'm twiddling away here, up and down. I don't know. I don't even know. It's too bright. It's still too it's bright. It's dropping in the back. Always it's too bright. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's it's raining again. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. So so um, video, of course, needs continuous light sources if. Uh, if you yeah. want some control over yeah. the situation, so um, LEDs are kind of the the go to these they days. Are. I think. I think. I don't know. Is it just me? But they're a little bit cold. I always think they're a little well, bit cold. It, it kind of depends on the. You, you can have yeah. white. If your if your camera allows for white balance, then you could warm it up again in the camera. But yours. I can't seem to right find. Uh, no, it doesn't. It's too old. No so, doubt. We'll work on that. I can't find it. Maybe we get. <laughs> yeah, we we, maybe to. we have yeah. very. Uh, I need a little gel or something. Like if I had a little, I imagine a color gel or something. That could help. Yeah, yeah. just a, just a half a CTO would do you grand. That would, wouldn't it? Or just, a just, CTO. Or a rich, Adrian, or a rich <laughs> listener. How about that? <laughs> it's it's a filter that corrects color okay. or just color. Yes. Okay. So, you know, yes, CTO you know stands for gels? color temperature orange. So you guys know why they're called okay. gels? Because they're like Jello. No, they were they're made yeah. from gelatin. Yeah. Oh. The the so the old the old uh, gels, the old filters. Um, you couldn't use them in the rain because if you if they got wet, they were ruined. They melt. They would melt. Wouldn't they, yeah. wouldn't they melt because of the yeah. heat as well? No. Yeah. Well, they would also they melt think. in the wet. They would also yeah. melt in the wet. <laughs> gels <laughs> are from gelatin. Yep. Just dissolve. Okay. <laughs> anyway, there probably probably, probably better to make them out of plastic. Learn a lot listening mm. to this podcast. I'm telling you, <laughs> you can use that in a. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Let's move on to the available light, because that's where all four of us, I think, feel uh, right at home. And I, guess, I would, I would guess that most most photographers, well, that's how you start off, right? I don't know many photographers yeah. who the, who get the first camera and a full fledged flash rig, right? I don't know many photographers who get their first camera and immediately think about the quality of the light they're using. Most right. of it is what can I point the camera at, isn't it? Very com composition first, I suspect. Yeah. But uh, yeah. would you say that mm -hmm. that learning about uh, light from its most uh, basic is probably best taught using black and white initially, because mm -hmm. therein Ooh. is the abstraction of light. And great yeah, and dark in terms uh, of reflectivity. Right, yeah. So when you start to look at, uh, even before you pick up a camera, looking at black and white pictures and identifying the most reflective, where the light's coming from, the shape of the light, how diffuse it is, how sharp mm. it is, yeah. um, will give you a, a, a deep understanding of, of the quality of those waves. And then when you move on to color, because that adds a much more complex um, understanding of the same principles, but all then RGB'd and 
you know, magnified each one of them. And we know when we do post that, you know, you can go into each of these colors and adjust that in particular. Uh, so learning photography is, I think, uh, or learning light within the, the bounds of photography is, I, I think a, a good step is to take a step back from color. I do this. Well, I, I would I, even say take, take it a step back from photography and sketching. Yeah. yeah. It's just uh, sure. light, light the is way any, I learned about light. Yeah, and light is so well, important. I, I teach this. We, we, we do this like at least once or twice a year. We do this local workshop here, which is just about light. And I really love a very methodical approach again. there because, because, the, because the light, because light, no matter if you use available light, if you use continuous artificial light, if you use flash, the, the, the same properties apply to all sorts of light. And that is the size of the light source has an influence, the direction, of course. The distance. the the distance has an influence on how it falls <coughs> off. Um, you have uh, intensity of the light source, and <laughs> those are all um, the same for everything. And then we add in the color, and that adds in uh, color temperature of the light. But the, the, those those four or five principles are the same for every kind of light you use. And once you get that in 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 your in your muscle memory, your quiver, somehow. In your yeah, quiver. in the quiver—that's a good term. <laughs> then, or in the <laughs> toolbox, then you end up. Um, th th then all the other things are kind of simple, because you all. I, I think add you a could add to that. to that. Sure, I think you add to that. Is that's your call the light the object coming in, right. but also the subject because uh, shooting a a piece of corduroy next to a piece of silk with the same parameters of light and the same capture mechanisms will yield completely, even if they're the same color or the same tonality, will yield completely different results because they reflect or bounce those waves back at different rates if they uh, bounce at all. So the reflectivity, the metallic aspect of it, I mean, when we you know, something that, that I've spent a lot of time with this year is is on something called substance, Adobe Substance, wherein you are able to effectively create um, uh, textures, whether they be rock or metallic, wet or dry, combinations of mud caked or clean. And you can add this in layers or nodes and create a, a particular kind of substance that you can apply to 3D renders, etc. But what's interesting is these are all broken down in terms of one's ability to control the metallic, um, call it the metallic uh, range of a substance. You can make it more shiny or less shiny. You can make a shiny object more pebbled or destroyed by sand. So it's equally shiny and yet it's it's pitted. So that again, bounces the light uh, around. All of these things and, uh, in terms of teaching light is, uh, I have never seen light taught from, the, from that point of view ever. Uh, but I think that's a very, very important thing for a photographer to really understand. And, and often if you go for a walk, just observing the natural world around you and and looking at tree bark and the different mm -hmm. layers of it and mm -hmm. understanding the texture, the reflectivity, what the light is doing to it at that moment opens up a tremendous um, world for you on a simple walk. Um, and it really enhances your photography. So what I'd like to do is um, ask each of you to go on this, um, let's say, walk in your mind, and what what are these favorite areas in terms of available light that you like to look at that you that are important to you when you shoot? Uh, Adrian, how about you? Is there anything that sticks out when you think about looking for the light where you where you are? Yeah, yeah, I can definitely think of a couple. Uh, there's, I, I think. Uh, 
if there's if there's a, a an object and uh, let's say it's a, a vase of flowers or something and if a shaft of light is hitting one of the um, one of the flowers mm. but the rest are maybe just outside of that and have a, 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 a different type of light on them you know you can that will always catch my eye you know something something where there's sort of draws out an individual out of a crowd um, and that could be an individual person out of a crowd. It could be an individual flower out of a vase. You know, it could you know, something something like that is always going to catch my eye, and I'm going to try and ca- try and capture it with yeah with the camera. Um, another one, another one. Actually, funnily enough, out on a walk today, um, I was on a hill uh, above the sea, uh, but not not directly, a, a couple of miles back from the sea. Uh, and I was looking out to sea and there was a turbine farm out in the sea and it was glorious. And all of a sudden there was this bit where a ray, ray of sunshine it was illuminating the sea directly between the shore, but not as far out as the turbine farm. And I was trying to capture that and I didn't have the I didn't have a big camera with me. I only had my phone, but in, even on the telephoto lens on my phone, I couldn't quite get it. But I really wanted to get that difference in the light, you know, the, mm. the way, way, the, way the, the light is reflecting. So that's definitely something i would look for just in 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 landscapes if you like opportunistic landscapes why don't i bring up the photos that we have um uploaded because most of us all of us i'm sure uh, have uploaded some photos that they were um that towards this topic so well funnily enough the 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 shot of of the flower in a vase there uh that i've uploaded into our into our group is is exactly what i was just describing right um you know that uh like is a shot skimming took, over the top giving it, it very, is uh, very and deep that, structure yeah and that was a uh because i'm a good husband that's a bunch of flowers i bought for my <laughs> wife for her birthday um ah. <laughs> uh, and uh you know they happened to be sitting uh, on the coffee table and the light came in through the window and i saw this uh and i immediately reached uh, for a camera to take a shot um, and that that I don't think there's any editing on that shot at all I think that's just straight out of the camera in fact straight out of the phone camera I think um, you know it was just one of those moments where the light car- the, the light carries the image right and mm, right. and I was pleased I have a print of that up on the wall at the moment even just a little six by four out of my dice up printer and, um, and and even that print came out it's one of those magical moments where it looks good on the screen and it looks good on the print without having to do any work when how often does that happen (laughs) and by the way for for those who are only listening to this the photos are up at tfttf.com slash tfop photos we are putting a link in the show notes of course so that of the flowers um yeah light light first for me i think when i'm wandering around it's the light i spot first rather than anything Mm. else yeah uh imar why do you want to why don't you want to share one of yours or two of yours um, the one with the vase there as well, I suppose, is a good example of that the one? something very similar. No, um, oh, above oh, it. That's mine. Oh, that's lovely. sorry. There we go. Uh, yeah, that one. That's um, an old one, but just I, I think um, that is edited. We're flower heavy. We're flower heavy. <laughs> yeah, it was just that that harsh light and the you know intense shadows and I just. The, the, that's beautiful. Very eye-catching, yeah. And um, like that, that, that is that light from, is stunningly beautiful. It's also very it's Irish. gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> very. It, Irish. Yeah, um, that's from um, a place called Charleville Castle, which is in County Offaly, which is a really um, mad haunted, allegedly, uh, really old house. That's um, it's it's this open has a very to the public, painterly but it's, quality to it. Does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything about that house does. <laughs> it's an amazing place. Um, and I wandered around it with my friend on this day, but um, there was tons of opportunities like like like, like that. I love a window or, uh, you know, something by a window or the light uh, beam of light come through a window as well. I like a sun flare. I can't resist pointing into the sun sometimes. I love to do that. Um, and-, and I suppose it's kind of what unpredictable what you'll get back from it but and i'm sure um, a few people looking at this will will think oh there's burnt out areas there's overexposed parts of the picture but you know what the the photo in its totality is just stunningly beautiful so that 
part. I think it's I think that gorgeous furniture that. and those. The color. You yeah. know, look at the lace on the table. It's just the way the light's hitting right. everything. There's silver trays and the silver. Um, so that's that's yeah, a moment when just, when when you now, when you see the light and I guess by having worked with art by having dealt with art you kind of realize oh wait that is really beautiful light and then you take the photo right? yeah and and I think the sweetest thing ever is when um, what you get at the end resembles what you felt with your eyes mm -hmm. not what what you saw with your eyes but what you felt I completely with your eyes. agree I love that phrase Ema and you know? I completely agree with it yeah definitely. So. There's this um, really famous quote by Paul Klee, isn't it? One eye see the other, the other fields, mm. and yeah, <laughs> sure. it's that yes, so. kind of thing, isn't it? Right. Um, so yeah. Let's see. You you submitted a second one. How about that one? Oh, that was just my attempt at um, flash. Uh, having a uh, play with the flash because uh, Good yeah. Move. <laughs> um, so you made you made um, this for this episode. I made this for today. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're looking. About we're looking at a, half at an a hour before highly we edited photo with uh, Imar's self-portrait, looking at herself in the mirror, with the phone using the flash on her. This is a. Yeah, I like it. I, it has a. Yeah. What? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how to know. explain the feeling, but it's it's it has, it has a bit of a Imar, surreal if, uh, thing to if, it. Yeah, kind of. I am Borg. Kind of. If this was, yes. let's was... let's say, if this was uh, a ten by ten canvas painting, mm. we'd be astonished. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? absolutely. Like, oh my yeah. god, this, this at scale <laughs> would be really, really good. Would be yeah. would be really cool, actually. And, and again, it has a painterly yeah. quality, right? Does yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, love a texture. That's me. So, yeah, uh, I like right. all those overlays and things, and yeah. So for me, for me, I want to I want to I wanna share this one, which is an eleven-year-old group shot in uh, on a workshop in Toronto, mm -hmm. and uh, the reason I'm sharing this is because it um, it exemplifies something that I have done for a long time, and I throw myself in a situation, in an available light situation, where mm -hmm. I where I don't know what's going to happen. And then I do an instant quick kind of location scouting to see what the location has to offer in terms of light. And in this case, it's a group shot. We're on the rooftop. Uh, I want Toronto and the CN Tower in the background just to locate it. Um, but it was a harsh, sunny day. You can see that on the on the hair of the people. There is uh, uh, nothing in the sky. Here it's even burnt out. That was on purpose. And I was trying to find a way on that rooftop to shoot a picture of these people uh, without adding a flash, without adding any any artificial light. And the way I did it was that I, f I saw this structure on the, on the rooftop and the structure had a white wall. And I was like, okay, that's my reflector. So the camera is flush against that wall because the, the wall is lit by the sun that lights people's faces. You have everyone facing their back mm. towards the sun, so they are not squinting. Mm. They have uh, something <laughs> like little picture frames in there, like little slide frames in their hands, because that was part of the workshop. But um, it is, it, it, it really, I really like doing that to, to assess what the light, how the location helps me with the light. And that is one of the good examples because mm. we had the, mm. the biggest reflector Certainly. that I've ever worked with pretty much. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's great. Worked out mm. really well. Yeah. That, that, that yeah, that, that, uh, unifying the location, the light and the subject are, right. I, I guess, solid principles. It, um, and it, in it, photography it, generally. it had a step into the flowers, of course, but um, that doesn't really matter that much because <laughs> <laughs> they'll grow back. <laughs> they'll grow back. They'll, they'll be fine. This uh, moment will never grow back. So. Very true. Very true. So, Jeremiah, which ones of which one of yours? Well, you uh, these are three examples of continuous light. Uh, this little bit of abstraction. Um, believe it looks like it or the not, inside of an egg. It does. It looks like. Is a it your retina? Weird... Is it your retina? When I tell you what this is, you're going to be very surprised. Uh, M Susan had just poured a bunch of of um, salts into our bath. 
Ah. And they were, they just the moment before they started to sink, uh, the light above the bath, which is quite a beautiful kind of ribbon of abstraction painted, anyway. Uh, was was reflecting this. I saw it for a moment and just captured it in black and white. Oh, that is lovely. And uh, I just felt this is a transformative moment because it, it the the image doesn't look anything like the subject. You know what? This this could lit. be this could be an endoscopic photo of my ear canal. You know, could be. Yes, I I can tell you that this is anything. You know, a, a strange mushroom, or yeah. you know, uh, and that's uh, what captivated me. I, I really like it. Mm -hmm. Did a little series of uh, of it, and and I I kind of made it platinum. This is on the opposite end of the spectrum. We're looking this at flowers shot. and uh, butterflies and lines. Butterflies. Everything in this photograph is, of course, in my usual mode false <laughs> these are no, these are all fake flowers a fake on, photo on, <laughs> on, it's unbelievable uh, constructed is, flowers or fake are, flowers no constructed fake oh, uh, put right. together and and shot in a small it would be a studio it was a small light box continually lit by leds and balanced and negative fill and positive fill etc and just taken um with I forget what camera I used here, but um, and this could be a test that I shot on my iPhone, but I think it was uh, um, Lumix. And uh, I just I was testing out the 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 quality of the continuous light on the LED reflectivity in the light box, right. and uh, mm -hmm. thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, turned out, you know. Turned out okay. I did a, uh, a big series on fake flowers done in that kind of maple thorpey way. <laughs> this was, yeah. they were individuals, but this is, um, I'm fascinated. This is a picture of my granddaughter. Um, mm. So we're we're seeing we're seeing we're seeing a girl on a on a sofa bed iPad. kind of thing with an iPad. Uh, she's and on a sofa. There's a painting in the background. And she's lit uh, by the iPad. She's yeah. lit by the iPad, and I, I just thought it was um, lovely mood. Yeah, I just thought mm. it was a moment, you know, during the pandemic, mm. early, um, and uh, I just thought it was it, there was something strangely moody, evocative, cool. It has a it, sweet. it, it reminds me of the last mm. uh, the last shot in Pulp Fiction, you know, when they open the suitcase <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and something lights up. <laughs> I love I love doing this kind of a shot when we play with flash on workshops, mm. like put the flash inside something and sure. have a have a have a remote sure. uh, radio trigger and then have the person yeah. look inside that thing and all you see is that person being lit from that inside uh, of a I find as well it can be quite a, I find it can be quite a flattering light as well on somebody yeah. because you know, one of the things that uh, that I find um, is that if a person is looking into the light directly and it's it's sort of bathing their face, it, that that then makes it uh, quite a flattering light. You can tend to get rid of you know wrinkles and, and blemishes and things like that, especially if it's a, a big one. So because people tend to look at their screens, it's often a good way to get quite a flattering light on the face. But then you've got uh, you know the rest of the as in this shot, the the rest of the uh, the shot is is several stops below in in terms of uh, exposure, and uh, it's quite uh, it's it's a nice technique. There's a lovely diffusion to it though, isn't there? It's very really soft. Yeah, and there's no manipulation at all here. I mean, is that the, fact, the only light? The, the it's iPad. the only light. Yeah. Wow. And the and the fact that the that the screen in this case an iPad but also a, a laptop screen or something is is. Is a is a light source that has a surface. It is a big kind of light source in relation to the face. Mm -hmm. Makes the light very soft, very uh, yeah. If as as opposed to a point light source. So where it becomes a little trickier when one uh, is actually shooting these things is when you're mixing hard and soft light. Um, uh, I did a movie several years ago, and and the two uh, stars of the movie, one was Sharon Stone, the other one was Isabella Gianni. Both you know, very different uh, facial features. You know, uh, Isabel is kind of a little rounder and smoother and flatter and obviously one of the most beautiful women to photograph. And Sharon has much more hard edge, etc. And Sharon in these scenes, uh, she loved, or we loved to photograph her in very hard light, hard directional light, really looked a little bit high, boom. Isabel, 
You couldn't use that light on her. It had to be soft. Didn't work. Peter James, our our brilliant uh, cinematographer from Australia, I bow to him. Um, and I had worked with him for years and years on commercials. So I, I, he's a real genius. And he was able to combine in the same scene, even moving with handing off like soft light and hard light for these women and balance the the mechanics and the f-stops perfectly and you don't really notice it when you watch the film because it, it so, looks so you'd have of, light sources moving with the actresses mm. holy wow. cow or moving from a light to a light <laughs> depending yeah. on how it was we worked a lot on location it was very very <laughs> complex because each of these um, actresses really needed to be photographed at their best you know, this wasn't a dour, I want to play a drunk on the gutter. and You know what I mean? No, it wasn't that. They had to look majestic and like movie stars in the movie. And so uh, Peter, I mean, I, I, I had worked with him. I knew that the women would love him just personally because they had to trust him. Because, I, you know, you, you, you could only imagine when an actress does not trust a cinematographer, it can be very, very uh, dodgy on set. When, when the actress says, Jeremiah, can I speak to you for a moment? You know, looking at their makeup mirror. You know, a little bit here. So Peter, I know, would, would win their, their trust and did, and in so doing, made my life a lot easier. And there are not that many that I knew who would, A, have the technical ability, but also have the social ability. Um, and uh, that worked out. All right. I need to get somebody to start following me about with the light. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, that's my, my thing to do for the week. <laughs> we've somebody. already given, we've given you the first step, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You just need a little handheld job. Yeah, you can play. You can you can practice with the LEDs that you have in front of you and just carry those around because they make it look you good. And and do we um, when, like I know uh, Adrian uh, rails against Photoshop <laughs> to his credit, uh, um, um, but I always find that that for me personally, enhancing, bringing out the best of natural light, uh, certainly in landscapes. And we do that. You know, you use a filter. That's a different kind of enhancement or de-enhancement, whatever you want to call it. Um, color tones, shifting. We have so many tools now um, that we can use or abuse. We can overuse or not quite uh, get their best attributes. But when we hit something correctly, um, you shouldn't really remember anything uh, except the way light plays on uh, the subject uh, it should never get in 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 the way of that <laughs> no i'm with i'm with you on that i i do you know for available light yeah i will absolutely uh work with the light in post the, the my, my comments about photoshop really is a personal preference bearing bearing in mind that i'm uh, an amateur man, right? and i do this for fun mm -hmm. for me it's way more fun to try and play with lights and get it right in the real world that's so much more fun to me than it is to sit at a computer and try and manipulate it digitally so i i have the luxury right of of, of doing this as a hobby and i do really think it's a luxury because you know it's there's so much to play with and i can i can go oh shiny thing over there and and that's okay i don't have to finish stuff if i don't want to it's kind of like an antidote to my professional life you know <laughs> i don't have to finish stuff i'm not enjoying <laughs> I can play with whatever I want. I've got nobody to answer to but myself. You know, nobody's ringing me up and saying, yeah, where is all this stuff? And I do have to say, I love playing with lights. Of all the gadgets and stuff that come with making photographs, uh, you know, it is definitely the lighting that I love to play with most. You know, I would say the same uh, of myself. Luck, you know, I, I, you know, lucky that I can make a living doing something other than photography. Uh, Something much simpler, like film and television producing and directing and writing. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but, go ahead, but Jeremiah. I, I think both uh, are quite valid. I love just 
you know, the purity of taking a camera out, no manipulation, finding that moment, I personally like. If there's fog around, dense fog, I'm all in. I, I will mm. I, I'll walk a mile for a mm. foggy beach, a foggy mm. cityscape. I, I, that, to me, just brings out my absolute mysterioso thing. Yeah. But if it's slightly foggy, I'd like to know how to add layers of fog. Mm. And, and so both are valid. For me, I enjoy the moment and I enjoy the post. Uh, I started as a painter. Maybe that's my attraction to the to that. Um, and it's certainly, I mean, if you look at some of my <laughs> recent work, everything I'm saying is, sounds like bullshit because I, I'm working in new animated abstract techniques uh, that I've been uh, posting and are ready to mint actually very soon. But all of that universe comes back to image making, however, to whatever tools we, we select. But being aware is the first step. So uh, there's one last kind of light that we haven't talked about yet. And Jeremiah sent me a link to talk about here. And that's the invisible kind of light, the uh, art of using x-ray for photography. So um, the one thing that you sent me is, uh, oops, let's get that one out of the the way here we go is a photographer like if we can call him a photographer uh, Nick Vesey um, he's I think he's from Britain and uh, he does things with x-rays he makes a different kind of photography and uh, the reason I'm, I'm I'm intrigued by that is uh, because I followed him a bit and I wanted him on tips from the top floor once and had oh. a, an email exchange with him And of course, on tips from the top floor, I want to show things like more like behind the scenes. How do things work? How do mm. things come together? And uh, he was completely <laughs> against doing That's that. Cool. He did want this art <laughs> to it. stand for itself mm -hmm. and uh, and not the how how is it happening. I so. think he uses uh, yeah. truck uh, X-rays when they, for, wow. a, a different kinds you know, of. Uh, You know, these big uh, things that X-ray um, vans and trucks moving through borders. Um, as I recall, yeah, he But, has he has yeah. access to several uh, rigs yeah. and uh, X-ray things. So and he and he uses Photoshop. He puts a lot of things together in layers. So yeah. it's not like one yeah. shot and it's the photo. That's right. Um, I hope all those impressive. people and his images are not like a regular model that he works with. <laughs> I don't <laughs> yeah. think I'd want to be X-rayed quite that often, to be honest. He <laughs> okay. different people. No. Yeah, he uses bodies. Yeah, he yeah. does. It, uh, the, the oh, like like the guy, like the guy that does the um, the plastic plasticizing. Yeah, you. Yeah, um, he, he does apparently have access to uh, deceased people who uh, are happy to have their body used for art after they yeah. death. Okay. So, That's so, so this is the thing, right? Sometimes, yeah, so adds, sometimes adds an edge to it. <laughs> sometimes, if you, if you really look weird behind process. the scenes of uh, how the, the sausage it's is no made, wonder. right? <laughs> you don't want to go there. It's <laughs> no wonder <laughs> he didn't want you to see behind the scenes. But we want to. We, so we, yeah, in, invisible light, uh, infrared invisible light. light. There's, yeah. there's all. You know, I uh, did I put up a NASA image also for discussion of infrared in space. You did. They've. You did. Uh, that, that's also a... Here's one. Look at that. The Sombrero Galaxy wow. in infrared, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, magical. Another uh, kind of inf in, in, mm. invisible light because our eyes... Yeah. I, I Actually, I talked to, to someone who had their lens replaced and he said that mm. he's now uh, more sensitive to infrared light. He sees it more because that artificial lens doesn't block it as well as... Uh, As the regular mm. lenses. Do you mean a lens in his eye? Yes, in his eye. Mm. Sorry, yeah, that, not in his camera, in his mm. eye, yeah. Yes, so he's, that, he's, that's he's interesting. Said, he, 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 was, he, was, he worked for Raleigh. He was an, a photo guy, so he knew everything about light. And he said, yep, I can see up to X nanometers, he told me. I think wow. 800 or something. And wow, that's, um, that's interesting. That's I'm going to have impressive. to have, was impressive, to have at least yes. one of my eyes done in the next couple of years. <laughs> Because I have a cataract in one of my eyes, okay. I'm going to have to have the lens replaced in the next couple of years. Tr try to figure um, out how far into the infrared you can see now uh, when the red <laughs> goes black, and now and then later check if the 
if, I'll, if I'll, that when the something. time comes hopefully <laughs> i don't have to have it done too soon but when the time comes we'll we'll, we'll revisit this and Maybe they'll put yeah, a polarizer in it, you know, for you. <laughs> I do encourage I everyone filter. listening to this podcast to check these pictures out because yes. they are they're very interesting and they do inform what we've been talking about in, yes. in yeah. I think very interesting it's a, ways. It's a really it's a really nice thing to to bring up actually because we we have talked about you know uh, uh, we've talked a lot around the subject of of different types of lighting today, but it's mostly been about you know the the craft of photography and. Uh, and you know it, almost in some ways you can think okay yeah we can talk about continuous light available light flash like that sort of thing to talk about something different that goes beyond visible light um is is, is, a, is a nice one to introduce i like that yes even if it's a slightly freaky example sorry <laughs> <laughs> well it, you 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 you'll, you'll find other pictures that uh mr vz did that are not quite as um, yes, fl flowers, flowers and, and things, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, if that makes you feel better. Um, let's <laughs> move on to our picks of the week. And Adrian, how about you? Okay, well, I have uh, I've been doing some research over the last few weeks, um, and there is there is a, an episode of the future of photography coming in the not too distant future uh, about this. Um, uh, this bit a bit of a teaser. It's about how as consumers we can use HDR video workflows and what even HDR video is and, and what that means. Um, so uh, my little pick of the week is just something I've bought for my phone, which is also, of course, my HDR video camera. Uh, and uh, it's just something very straightforward. Um, it is a filter mount. Um, and uh, I've chosen this because uh, it's really useful. Um, and uh, the no, as, as you might expect, I've bought some filters to go with it. But... <laughs> <laughs> But the, the, there's a lot of stuff out there for, for phones at the moment. It's kind of odd shapes or odd sizes or, or sort of non-standard. And having had, this is my second attempt at, at setting up a, a, a video rig recently. Um, and, and this time I've gone with Moment Kit um, because Moment use simple round filters that you could move from phone to phone. Mm -hmm. And the filter mount is just a simple bit of bayonet that you can move from phone to phone. So... Um, hopefully, if you if anybody is going to make an investment in things like ND filters for for video or anything else, then then actually having filters that can last past the life of your current phone uh, probably a good idea because mm. they're they're, inve they're definitely investments filters, even the small ones. You have probably. to buy the case. Is it uh, comes with a specific uh, phone um, case? Please. So there are there are now several brands that support a bayonet mount. Uh, moment is one of them a uh, small rig is another there there are the and it, it is just a sort of two-bladed bayonet and you so just they share a on. bayonet you can move those between systems yes so with with some so so you you, you do need to to read into what you're buying um a moment is but uh, i i have actually bought a moment case and so my bayonet mount just you know twists onto that and then i and then the filters i've got are just normal screw filters and you can stack them as well so you know um once you've got a a, a six stop nd filter on it and and a mist filter to, to take some of the sharpness out of it give it a bit of a glow uh that's the sort of look that I, i'm going for because sometimes the, uh, the 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 phone video can be a little bit brittle a little bit over sharpened mm. and the mist helps to deal with that a little mm. bit uh and uh because you can't because your iris is stuck right yeah wide wide open um whereas on a, on you know my fuji xt3 that i'm looking into right now i would probably never use much more than a three stop nd filter for that uh and shoot f8 and that'll get you through most things in europe at least in western europe anyway uh and then um you know the the phone because it's a f2 or 2.4 or whatever i don't know i don't know what it is you do need quite a lot of stops of nd <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> jeremiah what did you bring us uh since we're talking about light and uh available light um i brought a photographer who is um oh, look just at that. an astonishing uh eye oh that is nice I mean, just breathtaking, um, breathtaking. And, you know, these are, you know, I'm sure there's some work in there uh, as well. And yet um, you don't really feel it. 
Um, mm. These are these are just uh, magical in terms of the capture of light on landscape, and I, I think a standout. Um, yeah, many. they're very delicately. They're whatever right. post production there is in there, it's done very mm. delicately and very subtly, yeah. isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Well, yes. it does feel subtle. I'm pretty sure that mm. there's quite a bit. You didn't mention yeah. the photographer's name, Jeremiah. Uh, Isabel. Oh, God, uh, Isabel. It is yeah. Yeah. Isabel uh, Tabachi. Tabachi, yeah, and and she's a Hasselblad photographer. Yeah, this is oh, on, that on the Hasselblad the website there. as a as a showcase yeah. kind of. Yeah. Look at the snow. It just looks. <laughs> it's a quality. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So that's, you know, again, the light was there. I mean, mm. th th that's there. I mean, the sky may not have been quite so orange. Maybe it was. The snow may have been brighter. Maybe not. But the balance of everything, and of course, mm. the gamma of these lenses and that particular camera uh, are pretty effective. So right. she had a lot to work with. Yeah. Wonderful. Nice. So I'll pick the second last slot, and then Emar gets the last one. Um I have uh, found this one recently, which is um, a material that is the whitest paint ever, which means ah. it, it reflects the most amount of light, which is uh, which is funny because um, you, you have all heard of Vanta Black, this blackest of black ah. paints, and uh, now the scientists from the Purdue University have uh, come up with uh, something that reflects over 98% of the light, which... I think paper is anywhere between 80 and 90%. So uh, adding things into that paint that makes it more reflective, um, yeah, is is it's going to help many different things, but p potentially also art. And the reason why I found this interesting is because um, they use barium sulfate to make it possible, which is the same chemistry that's in bar 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 barita, barita. barita yeah. photo paper. So this is a photo paper that has been around forever. And uh, it is famous for its super high contrast. So you have these, you have this paper, you put it, you, 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 you expose it, you develop it, you put it in a barita press, which makes the surface very shiny. So you have these really dark blacks and these really bright whites. And that is what is in the barita photo paper that has been used for, I don't know, a long time, hundred years. So uh, they are now making this into a paint and it reflects more light. Oh, that's so good. I have the, uh, the there's someone who, who did uh, do a knockoff of the black paint i i have yes. some and yes. I've, I've played with it well and, and you, you know why the they did the knockoff you know why because the oh, guy, i do the guy who made the vanta black uh was, a, was a bit of a diffi difficult about the paint Very. and who could use it and who could not mm. use it and like licensing and stuff and well i licensed it story. to one one woman uh yeah. architect right um mm. painter. bit of a wild story who, there yeah she 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 basically licensed it and is the only one that can use it. I yeah. mean, absurd. But uh, there you go. So somebody made a knockoff. And I <laughs> I recently bought his gold paint, which is the goldest of gold. Oh, <laughs> the goldest of gold. But what's interesting is in that same light box that I shot the flowers, I, I kind of played with taking a model of a car, painting it black, and mm -hmm. photographing it. It's just a silhouette. It just it disappears. It just vanishes, or or taking an object like you know an orange, <laughs> just painting a stripe. It's absolutely nuts. So there it's, you go. It's, it probably <laughs> feels a bit like being in one of these uh, sound deadened rooms where no reflections yeah, come yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, it does. But by the way, in terms of teaching, it's a very interesting thing where you have here's light hitting a, a subject. Oh yeah, that has a certain color and reflectivity, and you put something that doesn't reflect any light and it vanishes and so you know i saw a video uh, <laughs> on youtube someone did, did sh showed that and and he he's, he told he he told everyone about this black disc the blackest black disc that he had and he showed video of that disc on his desk and it turned out it wasn't a black disc it was a hole into a black box so there was a <laughs> a box under it that was painted black and of course that would also not return any light so it looked like is it was a, a black disc uh, and 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 then he <laughs> stuck his hand in it and was like na 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 so <laughs> okay last but not I had that black disc 
Well, you can, you can show it next time. Uh, um, next time, yeah. Imar, you brought us something from... I brought you, in film. keeping with the whole uh, available light thing, the most possibly beautiful thing I think ever captured on film is this Barry Lyndon. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm sure most people listening will have seen it already. Um, I just realized this isn't actually the article. But um, it's it's not even to do with the article. It's just if you haven't watched the film, watch the film because it's, it's totally. Is that is that the one? If I remember rightly, that famously shot with candlelight with some yes. of the, the fastest yeah, lenses and, ever. And yeah. of it's not the fastest lens light. ever, but it's a very very fast lens. Yeah. And uh, I, I have, if, if, if you don't mind, I have a, one or two bits of... The whole thing just looks like a painting. Yeah. Or, now, I know, have one or two bits to add to this because uh, I looked mm. into this and it's so amazing. Like uh, the lens is an f, f 0.7. So the depth of field is almost non-existent when they shoot it wide open. So the, uh, so, so the actors had to learn to move sideways and not forward <laughs> or backwards <laughs> during those scenes. Wow. Because otherwise mm. they would they would not be in focus anymore it leaves the focal plane and they uh, apparently also had candles in that scene that candlelit scene that had like three wicks each special made candles (laughs) so so i thought you were going to say they were roman candles you know no they burned they burned three times as fast so they had to like replace the candles uh, during the shoot all the time because they went they were bright but uh, they were gone pretty quickly so and filmed in the lovely changing irish light that i'm fighting with there you go this whole hour so yeah. it's good i can't <laughs> keep up with it so <laughs> i have been trying even if it doesn't look like i have well i think one is for sh- one thing's for sure light is uh definitely part of the future of photography because without light <laughs> there is no photography it's in the name or, or by it's, the way or anything else <laughs> Or anything else. Light. We need light. We need lots of it. And we need it all the time. And the plants need light. And uh, yeah, light is the best. And if you... Our spirits need light. Ah, look at that. Well, oh, there's a crack in the world. What a note to leave it on. Leonard Cohn. Well, we a have... A crack yeah. in the world. Where we, the light like it. we have spring coming, light coming. The mood is getting better. Everything is turning to the good. So thanks everyone for watching. And thanks everyone for... Uh, taking the time to do this we will be back in a week i guess if i don't forget to press the button well (laughs) anyway till then take care bye 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 you've been listening to the future of photography Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Hold up. 